I want to make this point about complexity and prediction in the following way. I want you to imagine you're in a room on your own and you haven't got any friends. Shouldn't be hard for you looking at them, sorry. <laughs> what do you do if you're in a room on your own with no friends? Well, obviously, you pull your ping pong ball out of your pocket and you hold your ping pong ball at waist height and you drop it. Now, where's that ball gone? By my feet or your feet? My, yes, I've not seen my feet in years. So <laughs> it's down. I'll pay you later. <laughs> so then you spend the rest of the afternoon doing nothing but dropping balls and waste time just to prove that it will land somewhere near your feet. What you have there is almost a perfectly predictable system. Now, what if you introduced into that room a playful puppy that likes playing with ping pong balls? How confident are you now about where the ball will go, more or less? Now you've got a litter of playful puppies that like playing with ping pong balls, are you more or less confident? Then someone takes a look at Jimmy and says it's the treadmill for you, son, and I'm obliged to stand on a treadmill, programmed at random speed, and because it's me on a treadmill, there's two large oscillating fans trying to cool me down, <laughs> and a litter of puppies, and it all walks in now, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and you're wanting me to visit <laughs> Where's the ball going to go? All bets are off? <laughs> Cancel your sporting bet account? How many influences have I introduced to the room? Puppies, treadmill, and fans. How many influences are there on your career? Are there more than that? Give up on predictions for the birds. Complexity reduces our ability to make predictions. This is why all economic models are wrong. This is why the Forwards Estimates Committee has to be brought back in to give the revised estimates every year. Because they're always wrong, because we can't make these predictions, because it's another complex system. This is why most weather forecasts, more than two day or two out, are wrong. Because we can't make those predictions. What we can do is make generalized statements that on average, in November, it will be colder in Derby than it will be in July. I've been to Derby Cricket Ground in July. It was snowing. <laughs> It doesn't always work. So in other words, these predictions, these generalizations are fine, but we as career coaches and counselors are working with individuals. They don't want generalizations. They want something that applies to them. There's no point generalizing. It's about them specifically. If we look at the um, trace of a storm cell across a city, meteorology still can't predict it. We keep getting these warnings in Sydney of these tropical storms and, you know, lock up your daughters, put your car away, blah, 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 tie everything down. It's going to be a terrible storm. And it's beautifully sunny. The next suburb is flattened. The same thing happens with bushfires. One house in the street is flattened, the other one is left untouched. There's a randomness to it. When it gets down to the individual level, the prediction goes out of the window. So instead of trying to con people into believing the world is more predictable and stable than it really is, we should spend time encouraging people and teaching them the skills of reinvention, the skills of opportunity awareness. So in conclusion, I think the chaos theory of careers is a good opportunity that the rest of the reality is solid presented. It should not be easily lost. We have to embrace the complexity of careers, embrace the complexity of students and clients, privilege, counsel, and educate, emphasizing complexity, change, chance, and creativity. I thank you so much. For